Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Bogart, Bogart Tolks from the company Siemens, and I'm working there in the in-house consulting group as a coach and consultant. Um, last year, Henrik from the program team of this conference asked me if I would like to give a call on a, a presentation uh, in this business agility track. And my first reaction was, why me? Why Siemens? There are so many cool companies in the world, agile companies like Spotify, Zalando, WL Gore, Swordworks, many others. They have all the cool success stories they can share and um, we can learn from them. But after some time of reflection, I agreed to talk today about our ongoing transformation at Siemens. Uh, just because I think it's a typical example of a traditional company that is struggling and is striving for business agility. So it's a kind of a case study I can share with you my experience. And if this meets your expectation, you are right here in this room. So let me start with a question. Who of you works in a company that is large and has been in business for many years? So large in the sense of 5,000 people, many years, like 30 years. Okay, that's good. I think our companies have several things in common when it comes to agile or digital transformation, however you want to call it. Um, large traditional companies have specific challenges in their transformation. And let's learn from each other. So I'm happy to share some of my observation, some of my experience with you. And uh, as I've been involved in both, I can share learnings from the corporate level as well as learnings from the team and the project level with you. Siemens began as a very small workshop in 1847. Today we might call it a startup. Over the next 170 years, it grew into a large industrial company with 380,000 employees. And today we successfully build and market a wide range of electrical and electronics related products and services to business customers. So the small sailing boat has been transformed into a large container ship that is highly efficient and perfectly adapted to the existing business environment. However, we all know change is ahead of us, so we can feel it, we can see it, the business is getting tougher. And um, so we have around us, we have already seen some ships sinking and uh, they could not cope with the changed business environment, the VUCA world, and these kind of things. So we don't want to be one of those companies that are sinking next. And a few years ago, the captains on our ship called for a change in direction. And now we are in the middle of the transformation, a transformation from a classical industrial company of the 20th century to a digital company of the 21st century century. We are sure that the ship will look very differently in 10, 20 years from now. And uh, actually it will not be a big container ship anymore. It will rather be a fleet of smaller, more flexible, smaller ships. And uh, as a digital company, the future company will also work on new paradigms and based on lean HI principles and practices. So that's for sure. If some of, or in case some of the steps on our journey appear weird to some of you, it may help to understand and to know the major constraints we have to consider when we change direction of our journey. So these are that we have but that our processes, structures, and culture have evolved over decades. They have 
they had worked relatively well so far. Another constraint is we still produce a lot of physical products, products like trains, automation equipment, or electrical power plants. So that's something we need to consider. We have very conservative customers or very conservative markets that we serve where our customers don't feel comfortable with the idea of getting weekly or monthly releases or even continuous deployment. Strict regulations uh, are very common in the business areas we serve today and that needs to be considered. We have a lot of legacy systems out there with a monolithic architecture uh, instead of having these small, nice, independent modules or even microservices. And our development activities are globally distributed across the world. Uh, so this constraints definitely add complexity and challenge of to this trans transformation which we are going through at the moment. And companies like Spotify have grown in a different environment with very different constraints. So how does the transformation journey has gone so far? Um, early attempts to foster business agility date back to the year 2008, first software teams started to look into things like Scrum or Lean. At this time, Lean was already very widespread in our production units. So people were familiar with Lean. That's what, this, that was good. Um, next was going beyond team level to departments and to projects, to larger projects that started to explore these new approaches. Then in 2015, the journey gained speed with a company-wide initiative to upgrade our company's operating system, uh, including the ways of working in product development. And today, I think we see change in many parts of the ship of the organization. So something is going on. Here's another question. Who works in a company that has implemented one of the popular scaling frameworks or is in the process of doing so? Oh, that's interesting. Which one? Safe. Safe. Also safe? Safe. Okay. Uh, interesting. Yeah, there has been more and more, or recently there was more and more talk about scaling frameworks, uh, not only at conferences or in conversation with consultants. You can really see it that people want simple or they want to uh, get guidance, uh, they want to know what to do and frameworks provide this kind of guidance to people. I also notice the desire for guidance uh, in when I'm talking to managers or other people. Just last week or no, the week before last week, I got a call from a new agile enthusiast he had come back from a training and uh, he told me that he appreciates the ideas behind Scrum and he would like to use them. Unfortunately, in their project, they have very specific circumstances that do not allow them to apply Scrum. And uh, so, but he also heard about SAFE during this training and he was wondering if it wouldn't be better to use and to start with SAFE instead of Scrum. Uh, just to give you some context about the project. It's a small project, 20 people. Several of them are only involved part-time, so with 25, 50% of their time. Uh, it's a distributed team, many roles, and well, you may guess my answer to this person, my recommendation. Um, at Siemens, we have very few parts of the organization that bet on a single framework. If so, it is safe or less in most of the cases. So, but just a very few. All the other business units use combinations or hybrid approaches for their scaling activities. And this gives us a good opportunity to observe both experiments with and without off-the-shelf scaling frameworks which, which is interesting, 
Uh, unfortunately, it's still too early to draw a final conclusion on what's the better approach. Maybe we can say something in one or two years. I personally think that uh, scaling frameworks are an excellent body of knowledge. They make a good compilation of what we learned in the previous 20 years in the HI community. However, I think just using one single framework as the map of the ocean might bring you into troubled waters. So that's my personal belief, uh, as long as no one else proves me to be wrong, which would be okay. Uh, one more question. Who works in a company where the transformation was initiated and driven directly from top, so from the CEO or his direct reports? Wow, quite a lot. Lucky one. <laughs> At Siemens, everything began in the engine room, not on the command bridge. So um, the first HI teams used to be software development teams who, was, who were struggling to adapt to this work, VUCA environment. And they couldn't cope with the new requirements, challenges in a traditional way. So, they looked into Scrum, Kanban, other things. And unfortunately, all these attempts had only very limited impact on organizational level. Uh, it kind of, it felt like a, an agile bubble in a larger organization, an organization that, is, that still has traditional expectations and traditional ways of measuring success. That changed when the top ranks on the ship got involved. We had a first significant boost uh, when the new CEO of one business unit got engaged and actively supported the transformation in his business unit by investing time and money. In addition to this active involvement, we could also identify other success factors for transformation. Um, here are some examples. The management team came together and developed a compelling vision for this new organization. And they also developed guiding principles for day-to-day decision-making. They also revised their product portfolio and put a clear focus on eight key projects. So those eight key projects always got priority in the organization, and at the same time, they also served as a kind of agile pilot for organizational learning. Then, management set a time box of one year for those key projects. One year, time box of one year, um, the typical project duration at this point of time was more in the range of two to three years. So it was really a challenge for the teams and it forced them to seriously think about minimal marketable product scope and to look into incremental iterative approaches. Additionally, um, they formed cross-functional teams that received a high degree of empowerment and freedom for their decision making. And the organization also invested into coaching and communication. So this was good, that made a difference. And in this organization, we could also reconfirm the assumption that a leader is very important for a successful transformation because when the CEO took a new role and left this organization, the entire transformation slowed down immediately. So if you need any ideas or advice how to stop a transformation or to even put it in reverse gear, you can also talk to me, but please don't apply this in practice. A little later, Siemens started a company-wide initiative to support the transformation from top. So it brought together influential people to drive the upgrade of the company's operating system. The aim was not to come up with an agile process for the entire company, 
the aim was rather to simply create an environment for change, for the transformation, with the ultimate goal to become faster and more flexible. So today, we call this the Siemens Development System, or SDS for short, and it is to foster good practice exchange, leadership support, and joint communication activities across the entire organization. So SDS is based or integrates lean agile principles and practices as well as modern leadership mindset and behavior. So it, provide, it provides recom uh, recommendations, sorry, uh, rather than guidance to the organization, which was quite unusual at this point of time because people were used to the idea when there is a corporate initiative, it will provide more guidance, more process. So we frequently had to explain to people, this is not a process, this is not a framework, it's not a book of recipes, uh, it's just require, uh, recommendations. So that was important and um, yeah, people shall shows their own approaches within SDS to really make it their own sustainable change. I think that's important. Here are some examples of the pillars that make up uh, the SDS, this uh, initiative. So we have uh, common principles that are inspired by lean thinking and by thought leader Mary Poppendick. If we take, for example, focus on customer value, that seems to be so obvious, but it isn't, unfortunately. Uh, in big companies like ours, bureaucracy leads us to spend a lot of effort on internal requests rather than real end customer requests. And what's even worse, it's the fact that people are trained and teach to regard their next downstream partner as the customer and thereby they completely lose sight of the real end customer requirements and needs and value. They only look at their next partner, which they are delivering some work to. Also deliver fast in small increments. It's a paradigm change for the organization. Most of our processes encourage upfront planning and Big Bang integration with all the related challenges and problems. So when we apply these principles today, we notice that several of the decisions today are different from those of the past. So we can already notice this. Then we have a couple of practices which we encourage for the organization. Those practices include things like fixed scope, variable, uh, sorry, fixed time and variable scope. It also includes the idea of an involving rank backlog rather than the fixed comprehensive requirement specifications, which you usually have in a traditional organization. It also encourages the setup of empowered, small, self-organizing teams. That proves to be particularly difficult in hardware development, by the way, uh, because we have a lot of specialists in hardware development, so we are struggling here. Responsibilities. Every business unit has appointed and empowered one so-called SDS manager. This is to show that the topic is important for the organization and to drive it forward. And the last pillar in this initiative is competence, competence development, not so much for experts. Uh, the focus is much more on leadership development. And I'll get back to it in a moment. Let's have a look on the structure first, uh, the structure of this initiative. At first glance, it pretty much looks like a copy of our company hierarchy. So on top, we have top managers, 10 CEOs of the divisions and of some business units. They form the, or they make up the functional board. Uh, then on the second level, we have second level managers, people like head of R&D or head of program manage, 
product management, so functional heads of larger business units. But what looks like a hierarchy is actually an attempt to comp complement the existing hierarchical structure with a ad hoc formed network in order to implement change. So many of you may know the concept of a dual operating system made popular by John Cotter. And uh, in this dual organization, we have a stable hierarchical organization for day-to-day -day operation uh, that makes it reliable, resilient, and efficient. And we have a second organization which is more dynamic and ad hoc formed around a specific topic. In our case, the specific topic is the improvement of the ways of working along the product life cycle. And we also try to leverage this approach in other areas. However, it still remains very difficult to really balance adaptability and stability in, in an organization like ours. Back to leadership development. Um, what is, how is the company supporting leadership development on all levels? As we all know, a leader is more watched than heard. So we need leaders, managers to act as role models. And they need to show the behavior themselves, which they would like to see from their people. Uh, some examples are that the people of the functional boards, the CEOs, they really take time for go and see events. That means as no learning takes place in a conference room, they go and visit certain parts of the business units in order to observe, to listen, which is pretty hard for a CEO just to listen, and uh, to see what's going on on the front line. So that's an example. The members of the working groups, they apply those new lean agile principles in their own work. They have regular work sessions uh, where they try to identify the organizational impediments for the transformation where they try to come up with ideas how to address those impediments. And the most promising ideas they take into their business units and test it there and try it out. So we initiated a kind of PDCA cycle for the improvement. They also don't leave the communication only to the corporate communication experts. They get in front of their people and their peers and frequently communicate the vision and the cornerstones of the journey. Uh, communication is very important in a big company from my experience, so uh, we always focus on this one. For all executives in the business unit, the company offers leadership trainings and in recent years, most of the people in this target group have participated in such workshops. Also, HR is offering something called Culture Labs. The Culture Lab is a safe environment for leadership teams to reflect on those new principles and to connect this to their leadership behavior. And of course, we also have learning journeys uh, where people can go get inspired by other companies, can learn and well, not all learn, learning journeys have to go as far as Silicon Valley. There are also other companies around us where you can learn a lot. I personally think that uh, already for the increased awareness and engagement of management, this initiative has paid off to some extent at least. Despite the fact that Siemens with 25,000 software engineers is already among the top 10 software companies in the world, which was surprising to me, uh, we still have a long way to sail to really call us a fast, flexible, digital company. Uh, here are some examples of the improvement areas we see for the near future. We some parts of the organization have already started to restructure 
around value streams and around cross-functional teams with end-to-end -end responsibility rather than functional silos as it looks today. Uh, interestingly enough, 15 years ago, several of those organizations were already structured in such a way that was before efficiency became the most important parameter for optimization and that changed every single the cost was the, the key driver. Siemens also set up a couple of fast innovation projects uh, that are supposed to experiment in a startup-like environment. And well, despite very good management intent, I can tell you from first-hand experience that the standard organization seems to strike back almost every day. So uh, there are a lot of pain points which those projects uh, recognize. The, these are pains like um, the, the strong demand for mid and long-term plans, uh, the dependency on bureaucratic and slow processes when it comes to procurement or IT support, and decision-making based on strong stakeholder opinions rather than real customer feedback. Another ongoing activity is to extend agile development from software into hardware and system development. And uh, also, I think a very powerful lever will be to introduce more and more agile product portfolio management. So this is using boards, Kanban boards, to make the strategic product and improvement initiatives visible. And once you make something visible, you have a far better chance to manage something and to improve it. So that's, I think that's very powerful. DevOps, I suppose that's a hot topic for many here in the room, for many companies, so it is for Siemens. And last but not least, um, we also have to win over our people in the finance and accounting department um, we need them to adapt the processes around budgeting and uh, the metrics that are used to measure progress, success, and value. Uh, so if you want to know more about this agile finance stuff, there will be a talk in the afternoon by Henrik Esser. He will tell more details about this one here. So, yeah, the journey continues. Um, there are still a lot of things ahead of us, uh, or there will be a lot of exciting challenges that we are going to address in the future. So always take this as an opportunity. And there are questions like, what are the new career paths for people in an organization that is more networked, that is more based on cross-functional teams? Or what are the suitable indicators to measure progress? on organization level, and uh, what are structures and processes that really adapt to stable and din dynamic context. So that's hard and difficult. Uh, so if anyone here has any recommendations, ideas, or experience, I would be happy to listen. But just approach me later today, and uh, it would be nice to hear from you. OK, I think we still have plenty of time left for questions. questions. So while an organization goes through a transformation, right, such as this, there's also the individuals in the organization also go through a personal transformation, right? Many times I've seen, you know, agile or anything else for that matter, right? So people say, yes, 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 I get it, and then they go back and then do the same old thing. Right? Yeah, that's right. Challenge. Yeah, because the system is still the same, and right. how you are doing it yeah. is optimized to the system around you. In terms of the personal transformation, whether the people are also moving in that direction, uh, of course, there's education, there's training, there's coaching, there's go see, all that yeah. to facilitate that transformation. But do we have some ways in Siemens uh, uh, which really checks the, the individual 
The agility, the agile mindset of the people, that's very difficult. Um, on individual basis, uh, what I appreciate is the idea that uh, is implemented in some parts of the organization now to not measure individual contribution, but rather to use the contribution of the entire group. And then in this group, you always have some team dynamics that will help all the people in the group to, to adopt this new way of thinking. So that's how I would approach it and how we see it in some parts of the organization, but not everywhere. So different experiments in different parts of the organization. Uh, if you can throw some more light on these two points, okay. Um, hardware is one of my pet peeves, so we can talk about it later. <laughs> Maybe it's not that interesting for all people here in the room. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of hardware, and uh, there are different attempts to uh, look into this and to see how this can also become more agile. Uh, it's you have to use different approaches. So there's nothing like a scrum guide for hardware. There were several attempts in the community to create this, all failed. Uh, but uh, yeah, we slowly try to also change this to implement ideas like uh, cross-functional teams, the idea of time box. All this not only works in software development, but also in hardware development is very helpful. Uh, but we are in the beginning, and I'm also involved in this, so let's have a discussion later. And uh, the second question was uh, conservative the conservative part. You can't change your customer, uh, but also the environment for our customer is changing. So I remember uh, when I was in one part of our, our organization, when I was talking to the R&D manager and... Uh, I made a statement that uh, I'm sure that also our, his customers uh, will be interested in this agile approach sooner or later. Uh, he, he completely refused this idea that is not going to happen. Uh, but one year later, there were two customers that were interested because uh, it was in a railway business and when you have very complex uh, projects, um, for instance, um, yeah, very compl I don't want to tell you any details, but if you have very complex details, it's very hard for our customers to plan everything in detail upfront and to give you detailed requirement specifications. So they were explicitly asking for HI ways of working. Uh, we had bad luck because our salespeople, the interface to the customer, had, even, had never heard about Agile. So they just ignored it, and uh, we, we learned about this uh, some months later, about this request from a customer. When you start implementing case, and, um, what are the challenges, and what are the benefits you see so far? Um, they have just started to implement SAFE, so they went through all the trainings that are typical when you implement SAFE. Um, well, actually, I was not so deeply involved in this. I cannot tell you details, but I think also there it's too early to really see if it helped or if it will be combined in the future with other approaches and other methods, frameworks. I don't know. So it's too early. Uh, can you share some uh, cultural nuances that you That's a very interesting, <laughs> challenging question. Uh, when it comes to cultures and geography, uh, my experience is there's not so much difference between the, cu the, the cultures, 
the difference and the spread is more within the personalities in this culture. So you can see a widespread of personalities in all cultures. Uh, this is more something you have to consider and you have to take into account. So work with people that are willing and enthusiastic first and then you try to also pull the other people. And in terms of management, of course, it is most difficult for, for middle management to, to appreciate this new, of, new ways of working, that's for sure. And we need to help them. Uh, I'm convinced that we still need the activity of management and coordination, uh, but maybe it will not be a, an explicit role in the future. I think Brian yesterday also talked about this in the same sense. started earlier. The objective, the, the, the key goals were to become faster and more flexible, more adaptable, more responsive to change in the world around us. That were the key uh, goals, the key objectives. Okay. Does it answer your question? or? Just partly. So, yeah. Right now, we have a specific goal uh, to um, own to half the development time on average for our projects in the next couple of years. So that's a very specific goal we have. Okay, and flexibility, responsiveness, that's far more difficult to, to measure. So we don't have, yeah, that's here one of my questions. We don't have an indicator measure yet to, to measure this one. Okay, that, there was another question. We haven't changed that yet, unfortunately. Right, so unless you change that. Yeah. There is not a general, I cannot give a general answer. Uh, I absolutely agree. Rewards, systems, incentives, that's the most important uh, driver for a transformation. So you should always start there, yeah. but I don't know any company that really did it. Uh, so we, companies always struggle for two, three, five years before they really dare to, to change this system. Um, what we already did in some parts of the organization, but not on corporate level, was to give teams, not individual goals, but team goals. I think that is already a first step in the right direction. So measure people on what they achieved as a team. Sorry? Yeah. Well, uh, at the end, it's to the people, but they are measured on what the team achieved. Each one in the team is measured on what the team achieved. But this is just a, a first step, and it's not perfect yet. Some more questions? Do we still have time for Ricardo? Five minutes. Five minutes. Cool. Yeah. 
it's frozen again, it's very difficult to change, right? Because you have so many procedures uh, in place. Yeah. So how do you deal about it? Try to uh, automate the procedures, the documentation, and all these things. We even had a uh, department in the railway business which have also very strict regulations where they tried uh, to, with e every sprint, to really do all the regulation related stuff as well. Um, so, experiments we have ongoing, and we are fully convinced, and we have seen it in many parts that you can make it easier for you to, to deal with the regulation. And also the regulation bodies are starting to change something now in their procedures in order to open up for agile development slowly. Uh, but I think the, the main idea that helps is to automate the stuff. And uh, yesterday there was a talk uh, where they also try to collect all the data and information automatically and only if, an, um, if, if you get an assessment or an auditor is coming to your company, uh, then you can print out the stuff he is requiring. Okay, more questions? You mentioned about culture labs. Yeah. So what happens in culture labs? Um, as I said, it's a safe that's for the leadership team. So as a leadership team, you uh, can get a facilitator and then you have a safe environment where you look on the principles, you see uh, you, what are the, the most challenging principles and then you try to figure out uh, what does it mean for me, uh, how can I role model this principle, what does it mean for us as a leadership team, what is it that we are going to change. So it's very, on a very individual basis. Uh, depending on the context where this leadership team is involved. But does the people consider the feedback with the teams? Sorry? Is feedback considered from the teams? Uh, not in the culture labs, but you can do this as a leader anyway uh, with, with your team. But the team is not involved. It's more. But maybe that's one of the, of the outcome of the culture lab that they will uh, strengthen the idea of feedback in their organization. Okay, uh, I think I will be around for the rest of the day, so you can approach me, ask me additional questions. Uh, I'm happy to answer them. And you can also reach out to me after the conference. My email address is included in the presentation. And uh, it's the cute, mandatory cute animal slide at the end because research shows that this will increase the rating of a presentation by 50%. So I just want to try it. Uh, it also tells you that you deserve a break now before the next session starts. So thank you very much for your interest and have a good day.